Oh, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Ryan Wingo and Charles Donner? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll go through the background in this case, then I'll move to my analysis. At the center of this case is an incident that took place in Hot Springs, Arkansas on May 10, 2019. An Arkansas state trooper named Ryan Wingo was driving east on U.S. Highway 270. This road has two lanes going each way and a turn lane in the middle. Trooper Wingo saw a vehicle traveling westbound, which he believed was speeding. The trooper made a U-turn from the left lane, but his lights and sirens were not activated at this time. Therefore, it would appear that he made an illegal U-turn. Wingo claims that he heard a vehicle behind him as he was making the U-turn blaring its horn. Not activating the horn or sounding the horn, the vehicle was blaring the horn. This vehicle was a Hyundai Elantra operated by a disabled veteran named Charles Donner. His wife Brittany was in the passenger seat. Wingo was apparently angered by this and decided he was going to pull over Charles Donner instead of the vehicle he started pursuing. Wingo made another U-turn and now headed east on 270, so he was going the same direction as he started. As he resumed traveling eastbound, there was another vehicle, a blue Lexus sedan, between his police car and the Elantra. Wingo passed the Lexus and tried to get behind the Hyundai Elantra. Charles Donner had moved over from the left lane to the right lane and brought his vehicle to a stop, probably because he was trying to get out of the trooper's way. Instead of simply remaining in the left lane and coming to a stop himself, Wingo moved into the right lane and slammed his police car into the back of the Hyundai Elantra. A police report completed by another officer indicated that Wingo was unsuccessful in stopping in time and caused very minor damage to Donner's vehicle. Wingo yelled for Donner to pull into a parking lot that was not far from where the collision occurred. As Donner was pulling into this parking lot, Wingo said on his radio that a car slammed on the brakes in front of him. This statement does not appear to be true, based on what we see in the video. Wingo approached the driver's side of Donner's car and told Donner that he was following too closely and almost rear-ended him, meaning Donner almost hit the trooper. Donner was interested in talking about how the trooper slammed into his car, but Wingo kept saying, we're in a traffic stop now. Wingo asked for Brittany's identification. Donner said he didn't need that. Wingo indicated that he did need it for the accident report Donner wanted so much. At this point, Donner used expletives directed at the officer. All of a sudden, Wingo opened the driver's side door rapidly and dragged Donner from the vehicle. He pushed him up against the vehicle and handcuffed him. Wingo said there was no need for cussing. Later, he would say Donner cussed him out for no reason. There's no indication that Wingo was ever in danger and no threat was ever made by Donner. Wingo claimed he was arresting Donner for disorderly conduct. Wingo placed Donner in the back of his police vehicle and returned to Donner's vehicle to speak with Brittany. He told her that Donner would remain in the police vehicle until he could calm down and act like an adult. It wasn't immediately clear how Wingo would identify adult behavior. Maybe he saw an adult on TV or something. Not long after this, another trooper showed up, presumably a supervisor. Donner was released and not charged with disorderly conduct, but he was charged with following too closely and parking on highway. In June of 2019, Charles Donner pleaded guilty to those two traffic offenses. My understanding is that Donner pleaded guilty due to the stress of the situation, like the encounter adversely affected his mental health. Later, Charles and Brittany would develop an interest in filing a civil lawsuit, and Brittany established a GoFundMe page to that end. Now moving to my analysis. It appears as though Charles Donner was not guilty of any traffic offense or any other offense connected to this incident. I'll go through each accusation here and talk about why I believe he's not guilty, starting with the following too closely offense. The rear-facing camera in the police car 
revealed that Donner was not following Wingo too closely. At one point, Wingo said he could not see Donner's headlights. This does not appear to be true based on the video evidence. Now moving to the parking on highway charge, Donner pulled over because he saw Wingo make a U-turn. Now Wingo claims that his emergency lights were not on when Donner stopped. I looked at the video a few times, like looking for reflections in the Elantra that would reveal what was going on with Wingo's vehicle. It's not really clear when he turned on his emergency lights. What is clear, however, is that Wingo used the middle turn lane to pass the Lexus and cut in front of the Lexus to get behind Donner. This is not something he should have been doing with his emergency lights off, and really not something he should have been doing under those circumstances, period. Donner is not guilty of this charge one way or the other. Either Wingo did have his emergency lights on, so it makes sense that Donner would pull over, or Wingo was driving recklessly, and Donner had the right to try to get out of the way. Now moving to the disorderly conduct accusation. Donner was never charged with this, but he was detained. Wingo's accusation was based solely on Donner's use of expletives. Using profanity at the police is a tricky topic. Technically, as long as there is no attempt to incite violence, no threat, and no use of what are called fighting words, this type of speech is usually protected by the First Amendment. However, in reality, it's a gray area because of local obscenity laws, liberal interpretations about what qualifies as provocation, and police officers who make things up, like pretend they are actually frightened or disturbed by the profanity when many of them actually use profanity on a regular basis. In addition, other behavior that occurs at the same time the expletive is deployed can be used to justify a criminal charge. For example, if someone is using expletives and waving their arm, it could be considered disorderly conduct. So the police officer is permitted and should consider the context, right? They have to look at the whole situation and determine if there was some type of threat. It seems clear that Donner was not committing disorderly conduct in this case, but he was certainly taking his chances by yelling expletives at a young, inexperienced, overly sensitive, and temperamental state trooper. I look at this like putting together a kickball game and using a number of dynamite sticks bundled together as the kickball. Can somebody do that if they could legally own the dynamite? Technically, I guess, but should they? It would be easier to remain in the realm of the non-exploded if one opted out of that activity. Now moving to Ryan Wingo. Did he commit any offenses in this case? He of course wasn't charged with anything, but it does appear as though he caused the collision. He was so fixated on his target that he committed to driving right behind Donner's vehicle even though Donner was stopping. I don't think that Wingo intentionally ran into Donner, but he did appear to be driving with his emotions rather than logic. I think one could also make a good argument that Wingo violated Donner's rights. Wingo pulled Donner over for made-up traffic offenses and detained Donner for something that Donner did not do. At no point during the traffic stop is there any reason to believe that Donner represented a threat to Wingo. Wingo is the one who introduced the element of danger. Now moving to some other items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. This whole incident was completely avoidable if Wingo was not so immature or had been properly screened out when applying to be a trooper. In Wingo's discussion with the other officer at the scene, he tried to make it seem like Donner was following too closely, but he admitted the horn is what motivated him to initiate the stop. This theme of immaturity comes up again with Wingo's overreaction to Donner's expletive usage. Item number two, Wingo appeared to be fixated on proving the collision was not his fault. This theme strongly emerges after he caused the collision. Before that, it was just vindictiveness. Now he added trying to escape responsibility to vindictiveness. He tried to move the discussion to the alleged defenses of Charles Donner. He didn't want to talk about taking ownership for his behavior. He pointed out that there was not a lot of damage to Donner's car, so minimizing the effects of the collision. Item number three, ultimately, by detaining Donner, Wingo was successful in shifting the narrative. The case was now about Donner's alleged disorderly conduct and not Wingo's wrongdoing. Wingo was gaslighting Donner. 
he was highly sensitive, or pretending to be highly sensitive, to any real or imagined malicious intent on the part of Donner. When Donner started using expletives, Wingo now had his way out. He now had his method for changing the narrative from officer-caused collision to disorderly motorist. This brings me to item number four. When the police are trying to deflect attention from their own bad behavior, they often run back to fear. We see that in this case. Wingo told Brittany that he didn't know if Charles Donner had malicious intent or not. If an officer makes it seem as though they're being threatened, everything else that's going on is minimized or dismissed. Now the focus becomes keeping the officer safe. This is exemplified through Wingo's obsessive desire to calm everybody down. Charles Donner needed to calm down. He told Brittany she needed to calm down. He had complete control over the physical situation, but he also wanted to dominate their emotions. If he could make them fearful, they would be compliant. Wingo may have hoped that feelings of relief from surviving the encounter with him would replace any concerns about filing a complaint against him. Item number five, Wingo was overly aggressive when pulling Donner from the vehicle. He could see that the license plate read disabled veteran. It was not only written at the bottom of the plate, there was a DV in front of the other digits. Yet he assumed that Donner could walk without any problems, even yelling at him to stand up as he was dragging him to his police car. When Donner was handcuffed in the back of the police car, Brittany told Wingo that Donner had PTSD. Wingo said that he had a lot of military friends with PTSD, and they don't yell at people for no reason. This is a surprising statement. It's hard to imagine Wingo has any friends. It always worries me when police officers impersonate mental health professionals. Taking mental health advice from Wingo would be as ill-advised as taking driving lessons from him. Now moving to my final thoughts. Some police officers are fixated on domination and control, not just in a crisis situation where they may have the right to do that, but all the time. They want the public to be submissive, to fear them and respect them. The police have the power to get away with many offenses as they try to enforce these unrealistic and narcissistic expectations, in part because they can shift the narrative. Essentially, they can initiate confrontations without cause and then blame the victims for making it worse. As I mentioned before, this is gaslighting. Trooper Wingo was so upset because Donner yelled at him for no reason. But Donner did have a reason. Wingo's own behavior. If Wingo could not understand why Donner was upset, he does not have the level of empathy required to be a police officer. This is just one of the many reasons this is not a career choice for him. Some people simply do not have the disposition or skills to be given power and authority. Those are my thoughts on the case of Ryan Wingo and Charles Donner. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.